Welcome to our second session on financial planning. I'm Ron Sweet, and today our focus will be on budgeting. Budgeting is a simple concept. It is a list of inflows and outflows, or if you prefer, a list of income and expenses, or whatever terms you want to use. Our goal is to break up these inflows and outflows into categories so we can understand our financial history and then forecast them into the future. When doing a first forecast, you need to collect the inputs to provide some history of your inflows and outflows. Things like pay stubs, checking account statements, and credit card bills will provide us some valuable information on our history. What categories you pick for your level of detail is entirely up to you, though there are some common ones most people use. Some common categories of income are your pay from your employer, Social Security and pension payments for those already retired, income from regular side jobs like driving for Uber or renting out a house, and then other miscellaneous inflows. And for other, it is entirely up to you what you include here. Let me give you one example of other that some will include, but others will not. When you file your income tax return, you might sometimes receive a tax refund and other times need to pay tax. I like to show a tax refund as a miscellaneous income and a tax payment as a miscellaneous expense. Someone else might want to show a tax refund as a negative expense. Either approach is fine. The key is to get all of the inflows somewhere in your budget. For our investment income, I like to include that with my investment portfolio and not place in my budget, as all of my investment income is automatically reinvested in the portfolio. However, if you have an investment that distributes income to you, say by sending it to your checking account, then I recommend that that income go into your budget as an inflow. For income that comes to me net of income and payroll taxes, I like to show the full income and then break out the taxes below that income to get to a net income. That is not required and you may certainly just show the take home pay without taxes. However, I like to estimate my tax refund or payment so I need that tax detail for my forecast. But again, your choice. If you are not sure, I recommend collecting the details so you have it if needed later. It only takes a few seconds to add that detail each time you enter your pay stub. For expenses, here are some common categories. Each can have subcategories as appropriate based on how you spend your money. Again, if you are not sure, Break it out into more detail. First, your charitable giving. Next, housing expenses such as rent, mortgage payments, HOA fees, property taxes, utilities in which I include electricity, water, and phone plan, and any housing related expenses such as replacing an appliance, buying furniture, and anything else closely related to occupying a home. I do not include homeowner's insurance here, but in a category called insurance, as I will discuss later, but you could make that a line under housing. Next, food expenditures. I like to separate my grocery shopping from eating out and buying sodas and snacks at convenience stores. This is an important category because people are often shocked how much they spend here. If someone needs to make some cutbacks, Knowing they are spending more than $100 at Starbucks each month might let them know to start preparing their coffee at home. Next, computer-related expenses such as the internet provider, software subscriptions, and computer equipment. And car-related expenses such as gas, oil changes, repairs, state inspections, registration, parking, and car washes. I include car insurance in my insurance category. One could put auto insurance under car-related expenses. However, my homeowners and auto insurance are with the same company and come in one combined bill. 
So it is just easier for me to show insurance in its own category. So here is that category, insurance, which includes homeowners and auto insurance, as I discussed earlier. Other insurance, such as life insurance, health insurance, or disability insurance, could go here if you like. We will discuss insurance in more detail in a later video. How you treat insurance in your budget can differ based on the specific type of insurance you purchase. Sometimes it might fit better under investments, for example, as with deferred annuities. Next is clothes. I do not buy much clothes, but I break it out anyway. I probably could just put this with the miscellaneous category, but again, each budgeter needs to decide their optimal approach. If you are not sure, go with more detail over less detail until you have some history. Next is gifts. I believe it is important to keep track of gifts separately because I think many people spend much more on gifts than they realize. Also, it is sometimes nice to know what I spent on someone last time so I can make sure to at least match that this year, especially when divvying up gifts between nieces and nephews. Health and medical expenses is the next category. Here I include anything related to fitness, which for me is all of my cycling expenses. It could include gym membership if I still belong to a gym. It also includes my portion of medical costs such as doctor visit and prescription deductibles. Health insurance is often a deduction from our employer on our pay stub which is the case for me. As such, I include health insurance in my net pay as part of the breakout for income and payroll taxes. Having it broken out somewhere is important so you have a good idea what you are paying if you switch jobs or retire and start paying Medicare. Health insurance can be a significant expense to monitor separately. Next, I have a category for dues. Here I include my professional dues for societies I'm a member of. I also include subscriptions such as magazines, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other pay-to-play charges. My next and most favorite category is travel. This is a major category for me as I love to travel. I budget an amount every year for a few fun trips and monitor this over time so I have a good idea how much I am spending. The amounts can vary significantly due to changes in airfare. I consider this a discretionary category that I can quickly cut back on if I am seeing shortfalls in my budget. And finally for me is miscellaneous, which is everything else. The goal is to keep this category as small as possible. Any major ongoing items that show up under miscellaneous should probably be moved to their own category. One item I put here is my credit card provides 1% cash refund. I put that in miscellaneous as a negative expense. That rebate could just as easily be shown as an income item. One challenge with building a budget you will want to think through carefully is your normal method of payment for each of these items. In each of these categories, I have separate lines for what I buy by credit card, what I buy by check or bank debit, that is ACH or debit card, and what I purchase with cash. I separate them so that I can reconcile all of the purchases to my credit card bill and all of the bank deductions to my bank statement. One issue some might have is if they do not pay the full balance on their credit card each month. I strongly recommend everyone try to get their credit card balance to zero and pay the full balance every month, but I realize that might not be possible for everyone. In that case, I recommend showing all credit card transactions in the month the credit card bill is paid, but then making an adjustment to reflect that less than the full balance is being paid. I always pay my full balance, so my budget is not set up to handle this. However, when we walk through my model, I will show you how I handled this in Excel. In the next video, I am going to walk through an Excel spreadsheet I built for a budget. It incorporates all of the inflows and outflows discussed earlier, includes my checking account details, and keeps track of 
all of my investments. I like having all of these in one file so they can be linked. For example, almost everything that is an inflow or an outflow will run through my checking account. So by linking that to my budget, I can make sure I have not forgotten anything and so that I can also prepare my bank reconciliation. I like having the investments linked in the spreadsheet because the excess of my inflows over my outflows will often be transferred to my investments. Plus, I need a place to keep track of all of my investments, and this spreadsheet is as good of a place as any, and will prompt me to review my investments whenever I update my budget, usually once a month.